SOLIDWORKS Simulation Professional allows you to simulate fatigue on your designs. In this demonstration, we will analyze a simple scale model of a double wishbone suspension assembly, similar to those commonly found in many commercial vehicles. We need to determine if the suspension elements are able to withstand a randomized loading. When running a fatigue study, you must first create a static loading study. The fatigue study then takes the loading data to extrapolate the component lifetime. For this design, the shock tube of the suspension is fixed into the frame of the car, so a fixed restraint is required at the mounting point to simulate the point of connection. The control arms are attached to the frame of the car, but are allowed to pivot freely to absorb road bumps. Here, we create hinged restraints to restrain all but the circumferential motion. The shock tube and plunger must be able to move axially, but not in any other direction. We can accomplish this by creating a reference geometry restraint. Here, the shock plunger is restrained to only allow motion in the shock tube's axial direction. Next, we simulate shock absorber stiffness by using a spring connector between the plunger flange and the bottom face of the tube. Cosmos Works allows you to simulate both compression and extension spring types. Since the radial stiffness of the spring is known, you can apply it to the design. For the real-life design of this suspension assembly, you will connect the components together with pins. SolidWorks Simulation allows you to apply connectors to simulate the behavior of a mechanism without having to create detailed geometry. You can define rigid, spring, pin, bolt, elastic support, link, spot weld, and bearing connectors. Pin connectors are required to act as a hinge joint between components in this design. To apply a pin connector, simply select two cylindrical faces of two components. You can restrict motion by applying pin connectors, by applying a stiffness, or by eliminating motion altogether in the translational direction or in the circumferential direction of the pin. Next, you will apply a force to the cylindrical face of the hub to represent the road force. Because the shock plunger and shock tube must slide freely, the default condition of bonded contacts will not work. Here, touching faces are welded together, thus causing the tube and plunger to act as one piece. Instead, you can select free, no interaction, which means that they will be free to move, but at the same time will not interfere. Linear static analysis calculates displacements, strains, stresses, and reaction forces under the effect of applied loads. After we run the analysis, the stress plot shows that the design has not deformed significantly from the load. For the factor of safety, the minimum value is 2.5. This is a relatively safe factor of safety for the assembly. We now know that the design will not fail under the typical loading condition. Next, we want to see what the lifetime of the suspension is under random loading by running a fatigue analysis. The loading can be applied either with constant amplitude or by using variable history data, such as a rainfall chart. The load applied to the suspension is more like the variable history because of the random undulations of the road. We need to apply a curve that describes the loading that is being applied. With the fatigue analysis set up, it can now be run. SOLIDWORKS Simulation can display many different types of results for fatigue analysis. For this example, a life plot is displayed. The suspension setup can receive 32 loadings of the curve before failure. While this is acceptable for a performance application, such as a race car, this might be low for consumer use, so the suspension should be redesigned. As you can see, SOLIDWORKS Simulation Professional enables you to verify that your designs will operate as expected during their operational lifetime.